Okay, so now we're actually gonna start assigning probabilities with actual numbers to events, okay? So the easiest thing to do is a um, discrete finite sample space. Let's go back to our die rolling, right? So if I have a, um, you know, I roll a six-sided die, I record the number that I see. That means that my sample space is one through six. And just to be um, clear in case my penmanship gets worse, these are kind of like curly braces that indicate a set of numbers, okay? So um, let's now consider this event. This event is that the die roll is even. Okay, what's the probability of this event? Well, the probability of this event is um, the probability of getting two, four, or six. Okay, now we know that from what we talked about last time, this event, we could take it apart into each of its individual outcomes, each of which is a disjoint event, right? So we could say that this is equal to the probability of rolling a two, plus the probability of rolling a four, plus the probability of rolling a six, okay? Now, this is easy to do when we have uh, discrete sample spaces. When you have continuous sample spaces, it's not so easy to do that. We'll talk about that in a future video. But for the moment, let's think about what the probability actually should be, right? So one thing you see all the time is um, if the die is what's called fair, then each outcome is equally likely. What that means is that, you know, the probability of getting one has to be equal to the probability of getting two. This all has to be equal to the probability of getting six. These six outcomes all have to carve up the sample space fully, and that means that the probability of each of these things has to be equal to one sixth, right? And we can go back and say, well, then the probability of A is really nothing more than the number of outcomes in A over the number of total outcomes in S, right? So in our case, we have three even numbers, six total numbers, so the probability of rolling uh, an even number is a half. Again, this only makes, uh, you know, this is only true when the die is fair, right? We're going to talk about situations where not all the outcomes are equally likely. And that's a common mistake in probability is to assume that every outcome is equally likely. We're going to talk about some examples like that um, in, in some greater detail. Okay, so this idea of, of kind of taking apart things into individual outcomes, we can even do when the sample space is infinite, but it takes a little bit more doing, right? So for example, we could say, um, roll a six-sided die um, until the um, current number matches the previous number. Okay, and let X be that roll, okay? So the sample space here is infinite, right? So it could take me, um, you know, two rolls for that to happen, three rolls, four rolls, or I might be rolling 10,000 times and I'd never see it happen, okay? But we can still compute the probability that this value x is a certain number, okay? So let's try and actually nail down these probabilities. So the probability that x is equal to um, well, well, here's an example. So probably x is equal to one is is zero, right? This is even not even an outcome in the sample space. This is kind of like the null set, right? The probability that x is equal to two is one sixth. Why is that? Well, that's like saying that I have six double outcomes over thirty six. 
possible outcomes, right? If I look at the the pairs of first die, comma, second die, there are six outcomes that are good and three outcomes that are bad, right? So that means that the probability of uh, getting it kind of on the second try, you know, the, the first time you can possibly get it is one sixth, right? The next one is a little bit trickier, right? And I apologize, this is whoop, this way. Probably it's behind my head there. Sorry, I have to watch my head. So what is the probability that x equals three? Well, this is a little bit trickier. What we need is that roll three has to be the same as roll two, but I can't have already had roll two be the same as roll one. So in some sense, this is like saying I failed on roll two and I succeeded on roll three, right? So um, roll three equals roll two, but roll two was not equal to roll one. Okay, so what's this probability? Well, this is like saying that on roll two, I got 30 kind of bad outcomes. All right, this is what happened on roll two. And then on roll three, I have one, you know, good outcome. over six outcomes, right? This is like saying that whatever I saw on roll three matches what I saw on roll two. So here I can say that the result is five sixth times one sixth is five thirty sixth. okay? So in general, what we can do is kind of pull this all together to say, what is the probability that x is equal to some number n, right? Uh, well, that's like saying the probability that roll 2 was not equal to roll 1 times the probability that roll 3 was not equal to roll 2 times the probability dot dot dot. Finally, I say that on roll n, I got the right answer. Okay, so the probability of the first thing happening failing on roll two is five sixths. Then I have failing on roll three is five sixths, dot, 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 all the way up to succeeding on roll n, right? So here, this is like saying I have um, roll two, roll three, dot, 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 all the way over to roll n. So I have uh, n minus two failures and one success. Okay, so here this is like saying, okay, I've characterized what happens at any possible roll, and now I should just do a quick sanity check to make sure these things add up to one, right? So do these add up to one? I sure hope so. Well, again, these are all disjoint events, right? So I could be, you know, looking at the probability that I got two, three, four, five, all the way up to infinity, these numbers should add up to one. And now I know a general formula for the probability. It's five sixths to the n minus two times one sixth. I can take the one sixth out and I can renumber my sum to start at zero instead of two, right? And now this is a summation formula that should be familiar to you from hopefully some other class, right? The answer here is one over one minus five sixths. What I'm using is this formula that says that when a is less than one, that this infinite sum is equal to one over one minus a when A is between 0 and 1, right? That's a good thing to remember. So if you took a class like Signals and Systems, you probably already had that written down somewhere. And now I can say, okay, well, my result in the special case is 1 over this, and this is just equal to 1. So that's good. We showed that we got a sum of probabilities equaling to 1. As we're going to talk about later on, this is a kind of an example of what's called the geometric probability distribution. 
Okay, so next time we'll talk about even more complicated um, you know, ways of talking about discrete probability spaces. And these are gonna be the kind of combinatorics problems that you oftentimes see in probability homeworks, things like you know, card tricks and probability of getting a royal flush on a poker draw, stuff like that. Okay, so tune in next time for more examples.